Welcome to Rec TV Education Viewers. In this session, I am going to work out one problem on the in, in, intrinsic impedance, the wave velocity, H field, and beta. And I am referring to the problem number 9.1, practice exercise 9.1 in page number 384 of Matthew Eno Sadiku. Now, let me dictate the problem. He says that a plane wave propagating through a medium with epsilon r, so he gave you the value of epsilon r as 8, mu r as 2, with epsilon r equal to 8 and mu r equal to 2, has electric field E is equals to 0.5 into e to the power of minus z by 3 into sine of 10 to the power of 8 t minus beta z volts per meter of course into ax cap okay so he says that this is the e value given that is 0.5 into e power minus z by 3 into sine of 10 to the power of 8 t minus beta z ax cap volts per meter and he is asking you to determine he is asking you to determine beta firstly next he is asking you to determine the loss tangent next he is asking you to determine the intrinsic impedance eta next the wave velocity Vp and finally the H field. So these are all the different items which we are going to determine. Start with the problem. Now the given E field, let us compare it with the standard form. What is the standard form of E field? Since it is traveling in Z direction, I should write it as E of Z comma T. So E of Z comma T is equals to E naught into e to the power of minus alpha z into either you can take cos or sin it's up to up to us but since in the given question it is given as sin so i'll take it as sin of omega t minus beta z into ax cap volt per meter okay now if i com compare these two expressions what all i can reduce i can reduce e naught is 0.5 volts per meter Next, what is alpha, uh, uh, compare the exponent e power minus alpha z with that of the exponent e power minus z by 3. So, from that I can easily say alpha is equals to, I mean alpha z is equals to z by 3 or I can simply say alpha is equals to 1 by 3, okay. And if we compare the coefficients of, of t here, here it is omega. And here the coefficient of t is 10 to the power of 8. So I can equate omega equals to 10 to the power of 8 radians per second. Now we know that the expression for alpha is omega into under root of mu epsilon by 2 into under root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square minus 1. Okay. And that is equals to since alpha value we got we compared it as 1 by 3, its value should be equated to 1 by 3. Now let us substitute the given values of mu naught, mu r and epsilon naught, epsilon naught and omega in this expression. Okay. So we are, let us substitute omega with 10 power 8 and mu is mu naught into mu r. So that is 2 into mu naught. Why? Because mu r value is given to be equals to 2. Similarly, 8 into epsilon naught is the replacement for epsilon. Why? Because epsilon r is given to be 8 and we know that epsilon is equals to epsilon naught into epsilon r. So epsilon r is given to be 8. So I can replace epsilon with 8 into epsilon naught divided by 2 into the same expression is equals to 1 by 3. Now, my aim reduces to determining this value in the under root brackets. Okay. Now, if I calculate this, I am getting it as uh, 10 to the power of 8 into 0.943 into 10 to the power of minus 8. 0.943 into 10 to the power minus 8 into root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square minus 1. Okay, that is equals to 1 by 3. Okay, now let us uh, go for some simplification here. So, if I go for some simplification, 10 to the power of 8 and 10 to the power of 8 gets cancelled. Okay, so I will be getting this value as uh, root of, so under root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square. Okay. minus 1 is equals to point 
three five three. So let us square on both sides. So if I square on both sides and simplify, let me explain you what are the values we are going to get for the under root term. So uh, let us go square on both sides. So if I square on both sides, what do I have is uh, under root of one plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square minus one is equals to point one two four eight. Okay. Now. Uh, further, if I simplify, under root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square is equals to 1.21248. Why? Because this minus if it is transposed onto the RHS, it is going to become 1 plus. So, it is 1.1248. Now, we got the value of under root of this expression. Now, let us call this equation number 1. Now, what is beta value? If you, if you observe beta is given by so the first and foremost is asking is beta so beta is omega into root of mu epsilon by 2 into root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square plus 1 okay now let us substitute these values it is 10 to the power of 8 into uh, root of 8 mu naught into epsilon naught why? Because mu into epsilon is 16 epsilon naught into mu naught. That divided by 2 would, would be giving you 8 into mu naught into epsilon naught. Into this expression is uh, from this equation number 1, I can directly substitute it with 1.141248. So it is simply 2.1248. Why? Because here we have got a plus 1 here. Okay. Now let us simplify this expression. So if I simplify that expression, let me explain you this. Hmm. So this uh, under root of 8 into mu naught into epsilon naught, we already got its value as 0.943 into 10 power minus 8. Okay, and uh, remaining is under root of 2.1248. So now uh, its value, I can write it like this. So 10 to the power of 8 into now under root of 8 into mu naught into epsilon naught, we already got its value as 0.943 into 10 to the power of minus 8 into under root of 2. Point 1248 and this value finally we got it as 1.374 so it is 1.374 radians per meter so if i check the answer the answer is given in the same problem and its value is given to be 1.734 radians per meter now let us go for second uh, item which is LT. What is LT? LT stands for loss tangent. Now, uh, till now I did not uh, give the introduction about what is meant by loss tangent. Now, loss tangent is simply the term sigma by omega epsilon. Okay. So, the value of sigma by omega epsilon we generally refer to. We generally call its value as loss tangent. Now, from equation 1, if you observe, uh, we got under root of 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square is equal to 1 point 1.1248, right? Now, let us square on both sides. 1 plus sigma by omega epsilon whole square uh, is the square of the LHS. Now, if I square the RHS, it will be 1.1248 square and it will be 1.265, okay? 1.265. Now, what would be sigma by omega epsilon whole square obviously sigma by omega epsilon whole square would be 1.265 minus 1 so it is 0.265 so from this what is loss tangent loss tangent is sigma by omega epsilon and its value is simply uh, it will be root of 1.0.265 uh, and we will be getting it as 0 0.515 okay so the loss tangent is 0.515 Okay, so let us check the answer for loss tangent. The loss tangent uh, we got the answer as 0 0.5154. Okay, but we got 0 0.515, which is in line with the required answer. Next, the third uh, concept he is asking, or the third value he is asking us is eta, that is the wave impedance. Now, uh, till now I did not introduce the wave impedance formula. So, the wave impedance formula is eta is equals to under root of j omega mu by sigma plus j omega epsilon. It is j omega mu by sigma plus j omega epsilon. Okay. Now, let us simplify this further. 
Okay, so if I simplify this further, what do I get actually? Now, it is simply, let me take uh, j omega mu by, in the denominator, let us take j omega epsilon common. So, j omega epsilon, if I take common, by 1 plus sigma by j omega epsilon. Okay, it is 1 plus sigma by j omega epsilon. Okay, now, uh, simply if I take omega epsilon common, it is j plus sigma by omega epsilon. Okay, now, we got mu value as 2 into mu naught. So, it is j 10 to the power of 8 into 2 mu naught divided by, of course, omega gets cancelled. So, we need not uh, worry about omega. So, it is j 2 mu naught divided by 8 epsilon naught. Why 8 epsilon naught? Because epsilon is epsilon naught into epsilon r and epsilon r value is given to be 8. So, uh, this into uh, sigma by omega epsilon naught we got, we got as 0 0.514, 515 from the last loss tangent concept plus j. Okay. 0.515 plus j. So, now let us go for some simplification here. So, it is 4. So, it is simply uh, mu naught by epsilon naught we know that under root of mu naught by epsilon naught we know that it is 120 pi. Okay. So, it is 120 pi by 4 root of I mean uh, let us simplify this like this. Okay. So, under root of mu naught by epsilon naught is 120 pi. So, mu naught by 4 epsilon naught would be obviously 120 pi divided by 2 when it is going coming out of the root. So, it is uh, 60 pi and root of j I can write it as 1 angle 45. How I got this? What is j in polar form? j in polar form is 1 angle 90. See, 1 j I can write it as 1 plus j 0. So, what is the, sorry, 1 plus j 1. What is the polar form of j 1, 1, 1 0 plus j 1? It is ang 1 angle 90 degrees because uh, whenever the real part is becoming 0, it's, uh, uh, if it is containing only the imaginary number, the angle is going to become 90 degrees. So, it is angle 45. So, why 45 degrees? Because a root of angle 90 would become half of it when the angle is coming out of the root. So, it is 45 degrees divided by, uh, here we have got 0 0.515 plus j. So, let us put 0 0.515 plus j in uh, polar form. So, if I say this, uh, it is uh, 1.1248 1 angle 62.75. And uh, if this is coming out of the root, or if this is coming out of the root, so it is uh, uh, root of 1.1248 is, uh, it is equals to 1.06. So, it is 60 pi is, uh, yeah, 60 pi divided by 1.0605 and angle, angle is 45 minus uh, half of 62.75. So, it is 45 minus, so it is 13 point. 62. Okay. And let us do this calculation 60 pi by 1.06. So, it exactly shows you 177.7 angle 13.62 degrees ohms of course. Okay. So, he gave the angle, I mean the answer for uh, intrinsic impedance is exactly 177.7 angle 13.63 but okay, it is okay. That 0.01 degree error is acceptable. Okay, so that is the answer given for our uh, uh, intrinsic implants. Next, what is he asking nextly? He is asking us to determine the velocity of propagation. Now, how to determine velocity of propagation? The basic formula for velocity of propagation is Vp is equals to 1 by root of mu naught, I mean mu into epsilon. This is the basic formula. Now, let us substitute the given values of mu naught and epsilon naught and mu r and epsilon naught. So, it is under root of every Tom, Dick and Harry can say that uh, mu is 2 into mu naught and epsilon is 8 into epsilon naught. So, it is simply uh, 16, okay, 16 into epsilon naught into mu naught, okay. So, it is under, so you got under root of mu naught into epsilon naught is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 4. So, it is simply 7.5 into 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. Okay. So, this is the value of Vp. Now, lastly, he is asking us to determine 
the H field. So once we got the value of eta, okay, how to get H now? We know that E by H is eta or from this H is equal to E by eta. Okay, so what is E given by given actually let us find out H naught. So H naught is uh, given by E naught by eta and E naught is given to be 0.5. So 0.5 by 177.7 okay now let us derive, uh, determine this answer so it is 28.13 into 10 to the power of minus 3 okay amperes per meter or it is 28.13 milli amperes per meter so uh, now uh, we know one identity a e cross a h is equals to a p okay so the given vector uh, no, a, a is given by, so A e is given by uh, A x, so the vec the propagation vector is along z axis, so A p takes A x cap and A e has got A x as the, A e has got A x as your uh, unit vector and obviously what is the, what is the value of A h that satisfies this equation, A x cross A y should be A z, okay. So AX cross AY should be AZ. So obviously AX, AH would be, obviously H would be AY. Okay. So now we got the unit vector also. So I'll explain you this once again. He gave that the, the, the direction of propagation is along Z axis. Why? Because he gave omega T minus, omega T minus beta Z as the term in the sign term or cos term in the given E. Okay, so whichever is after beta, that is the direction of propagation. So omega t minus beta z, if you compare with the standard format, obviously z direction is the direction of propagation. So a p takes a z cap. Now, what about a e? The unit vector given in a e expression is at the last it is a x. So that's in why a e takes a x cap. Okay, so by the basic formula, a e cross a h should be equals to a p. So that is a e is a x replaced, a h we should find out and a p, the direction of propagation is along z axis. So, so I have taken a z cap as a p. So uh, from this, uh, obviously the only uh, the only e, the unit vector that is satisfying this equation is a h should be equal to a y cap. Okay. Now once we got a, a h also, now I can write h expression as h of z comma t is equals to yeah uh, the magnitude of h is 28.1 that is h naught. So 28.13 into e to the power of minus z by 3 into uh, sine I think. So he has given sine term sine of 10 to the power of 8 t minus beta is 1.37 I mean 1.374 omega t minus beta z into what is the unit vector it is simply of course the angle also is there so the angle difference between e and h is your 13.63 or 13.62 degrees we got into a y cap milli ampere per meter why it should be milli ampere per meter because we got the h naught magnitude as 28.13 into 10 to the power minus 3. Okay, so 10 to the power of minus 3 will be uh, milli. So the final expression for h of z comma t is this expression. That is h of z comma t should be equals to 28.13 into e to the power of minus z by 3 into sine of 10 to the power of 8 t minus 1.374 z minus the angle between e and h which is the angle in intrinsic impedance. That is 13.62 degrees into a y cap milliamps per meter. Okay, so uh, if you find this problem to be a very good explanative, please subscribe our channel and uh, thank you for watching our videos.